Hi guys, and welcome to the Palletful Packs YouTube channel. My name is Alice, and I have the December 2019 Palletful Packs Premier Pack right in front of me. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what's inside. Okay, I'm excited. Last Palletful Pack of 2019, last of the decade actually. So this is a golden fluid acrylic pack, according to our little pamphlet in here. So the first thing that I see here is this brush. This is a white sable Robert Simmons brush in size number eight. So in contrast to the traditional like red sable hair brushes, these are going to hold more color. They're going to clean easier and they're going to last longer than red sable. So this is a lot more hardier, but they do have the good spring, a flexible point and the sharp working edge that sable traditionally offers, which is awesome. And they're also guaranteed for life. And it says that the brush can be used for acrylic watercolor or oil which is wonderful so yay nice versatile all-rounder brush here okay so the next thing that I see in here is this spray bottle which is so useful you can use this to keep your acrylics wet or to create a bunch of different effects I always use a spray bottle in my own work it's just a really really helpful tool to have so that's great that they included this also I love the very festive little like paper crinkles this time around very fun Okay, so here we have the paints. There's one more in here, there we go. Okay, so the paints are Golden Artist Colors Fluid Acrylics. There are four colors in here, Titanium White, Phthalo Blue Green Shade, Quinacridone Magenta, and Benzimidazolone Yellow Medium. I have no idea if I just pronounced that correctly. So these are super, super intense permanent colors, and they are supposed to have a consistency similar to heavy cream, so they're gonna be a lot more fluid hence the name fluid acrylics, than your general acrylic. But they are produced from light fast pigments, so they're not dye based, which is wonderful. Always love to hear that. There's no fillers or extended added. There's no fillers or extenders added. So you're just getting a nice pigmented, beautiful paint. So I am excited for that. Can't wait to play around with these. Okay, so the last thing in the box are these surfaces, and there are three surfaces in this box. So the first is this Art Alternatives Canvas Panel, and this is a fun shape. This is six by 12, so long and skinny, so a nice cool like landscape, or you could do this as a portrait, honestly, but I am feeling the landscape on this. So this is primed with acid-free acrylic titanium gesso. It's got an acid-free recycled paper board core, and it's suitable for use with all acrylic paints, oil paints, and any other wet or dry media that you really wanna use with it. So that's exciting. And the other two surfaces are both ampersand smooth primed artist panels. There's a six by six and a four by four. So these panels have a super ultra smooth finished surface that you can use so much different stuff on oils, acrylics, and mixed media. They're warp resistant because they're boards and they are a great alternative to canvas. So it's made of top quality MDF with a smooth acrylic coating, which is gonna give you the ability to do really fine brushwork without worrying about that canvas texture and other things like that. It's also great if you wanna mount other stuff on it like papers or prints, all of that. Okay, so those are all of the different surfaces that we have here. We've got these paints, these fluid acrylics. I am excited, so let's dive in and make some art. So I decided to start on the small canvas panel so that I could get a little bit more used to the way that the paints worked before I dived in on the larger canvas. So I decided to do something small and cute and just draw some little plants like leaves and do a cool kind of fun background. And because these are fluids, I really wanted to play around with all of the different things that I could do with them, um, especially all the different textures I could create. So I started by dampening the board just a little bit, and then I went in with some of the fluid acrylics a little bit watered down, and I started working in sort of a wet on wet fashion to create all of these really, really fun kind of areas and pockets of color. I sprayed it with water and then I went back and used some of the paper towel to lift up where the paint was. And then I went in with my hair dryer to blow around some of the paint and to dry it a little bit as well. And I just kept building up in layers over the top of that. Once I had that done, I spent some time waiting for it to dry. I kept kind of having to use the hair dryer, spraying it with some water, kind of softening it up until I created a result that I liked. And this was how the background ended up turning out. 
And then once I was happy with the texture in the background, I went back in over the top and started filling in those leaf shapes that I had drawn earlier with a darker green combo. When you're painting on this specific surface, you can lift the paint a little bit more when it's still wet. So I think that it was a little bit important to make sure that each layer was dry before I went on. Otherwise it could lift up the layer underneath. So you can use that lifting to your advantage like I did earlier when I like used it to lift up kind of maybe where the centers were going to be, which didn't end up translating to the final piece, but I thought it was a cool technique anyway. And but when you're building up that opacity, it's definitely helpful to wait for each layer to dry in between so that you don't lift things off a little bit, which is what I did here. And I think that it came out really cute. I was pretty happy with the overall look of how this little guy turned out. And it was a really good way for me to start kind of getting used to the paints and kind of seeing how they were going to flow. They are super fluid. Like I said before, they are, it's at the consistency of heavy cream. And I think that's pretty true. They are pretty liquid on their own. You can light, like make them more liquid by adding in water and watering them down that way. But you don't even have to, you can kind of use them on their own as they are, they're definitely fluid enough to work for pores, uh, moving things around, just kind of like doing all those fun effects, which is really exciting. If you have used palette packs before, or if you've tried Yupo paper, I felt like these artboards worked kind of similarly to Yupo paper with these specific acrylic paints and the reason that I say that is because when you use them like watered down on the surface you can get those really nice darker edges and create some really really cool effects with that so if you've ever used Yupo paper this is kind of a similar effect to that as well but as you can see because they are acrylics you can build up on top of each other and add in those lighter colors later and that was my little leaf drawing and now I moved on to the bigger drawing. So the thing that I really enjoyed the most when I was doing the small little four by four picture was kind of the pouring and the moving around of the paint, the fluid paint. And so I decided I really wanted to use a lot more of that technique in this next piece. And I thought that it would be cool looking at the colors that I had and just thinking about what I had done before to do kind of a night sky turning into a daytime sky, a little bit more abstract, but I thought that it would be really, really fun and a really nice way to show off all of the different colors and play around with all of the different effects that you can do. So as you can see, I really got this canvas pretty soaked with the paint. I played around with both adding paint in that I had watered down from my palette and also pouring the paint directly on there from the bottles which worked pretty well. I think if you pour the paint directly on from the bottles, I personally had to use my paintbrush a lot of times or like a spray bottle to kind of break up some of those bigger puddles of paint. But once I did that, it worked pretty well to move things around and create some of these really cool textures and effects. I went in with paper towel then and I lifted up a bunch of areas, which it lifted up so, so well, as you can see. And I used that to establish where I wanted some clouds to be in this little like gradient kind of abstract sky. And then I went in with some of the white acrylic paint and I started adding in some white to where I wanted those clouds to be before I moved on and it did more of the tipping and tilting and pushing around of the paint. I waited for that first layer to dry, which took quite some time. And then I went in with a second layer to build up some more definition and to make it look a little bit darker on the night sky side to kind of fill in that center area and to define the clouds a lot more and make them look more cloud-like. I basically established my first base layer and then just continue to work over the top of that. So because these are acrylics, you can use them watered down to create all these cool watercolor like fluid effects which is wonderful but they are opaque so you can actually layer on top of them add the white back on top and things like that which is so so useful if you are the kind of person that likes to work in layers you don't have to necessarily plan things out as much you can kind of add and uh, readjust and change which is super super useful I was continuing to work in a wet on wet style, adding in more of this dark blue and pushing it around, adding in a lot of that white 
and yeah just continuing to kind of build this up there's a lot of different techniques that you can use when you are playing around with these whether it's pushing them around with moving the canvas using a hair dryer blowing on them i found that i was able to get these to dry a little bit faster by having a space heater next to it because if you're playing around with this kind of poor fluid technique it's very very wet so obviously it can take some time to dry so if you don't want to wait overnight or if you need to speed the process up that was helpful for me and once I was done with that, I just had to add a few little details. So I added in some little stars and a moon peeking out from the clouds. I think it came out really cool. It's definitely different than what I normally do, but I'm happy with it. So I hope that you guys liked it as well. And I hope that you had fun playing around with this month's palette packs. I think it is a really, really fun box and I can't wait to see what everyone came up with. If you are interested in getting your own palette packs, then the link will be in the description box down below. So make sure you check that out out to see what we have to offer and I hope that this video was helpful for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye guys!